Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today, the church is encouraging us to continuously listen to Christ and his prophets, and also make sure that we work on a strong relationship and connection with him. And therefore today, we will look at what it is that we need to do to keep our connection with Jesus strong, intimate, and with an eternal perspective. We take a short moment of silence and we ask God for pardon and peace. I confess to the Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our might and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 20. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The Lord your God will raise up from you a prophet like me from among you, from you, brethren, him you shall heed, just as you desire of the Lord your God, at help on the day of the assembly. When you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They have rightly said all that they have spoken. I will raise up from a prophet like you from among their brethren. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not give heed to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 95, verse 1 to 2, 6 to 7, A, B, and C, 7, D to 9. The response, oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, Harden not your hearts. All that today listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you 
would listen to his voice harden not your hearts oh that today you would listen to his voice harden not your hearts come let us ring out our joy our joy to the lord our joy to the lord Hail the rock who saves, who saves us. Let us come into his presence, giving thanks. Let us hail him. We song, a song of praise. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your Come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For He is our God, and we the people who belong to his his pasture the flock that is led by his hand oh that today you would listen to his voice harden not your heart oh that today you would listen to his voice harden not your heart as at Mary Bam, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, when they tried me, though they saw my, my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts harden not your hearts oh that today you would listen to his voice harden not your hearts harden not your hearts
second reading. A reading from the letter of the first Corinthians, chapter 7, 32 to 35. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord, but the married man is anxious about worldly affairs, how to please his wife, and his interests and defeated. And the unmarried woman or virgin is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly affairs, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit not to lay any resist, restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Authority. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. We are reading from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. In the city of Capernaum, on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? 
I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him, and they were all amazed. So that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we talk about paying attention to Christ and also paying attention to his authentic prophets. It is the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. We've got one Sunday, as we said, we've got one Sunday before we enter into the Lenten period. On this Sunday, the church continues to encourage us to listen attentively to Christ in order to have an intimate relationship with him. Last Sunday, if you remember, guided by Father Gitonga, we celebrated the Sunday of the Word of God, the third Sunday in ordinary time in which day that we were able to emphasize or put some extra emphasis on the word of God as guided by the Holy Father. And we said, if you remember, that one way of uh, establishing a relationship, among others, is fidelity to the word of God. Christ is our teacher who speaks with authority, not like the scribes. The Bible says. Also, the church reminds us of the consequences of speaking falsely in the Lord's name. Our first reading from the book of Deuteronomy is one of those passages in the Bible referred to as the messianic prophecies. Through this prophecy from Moses, God promised us the Messiah. This promise was fulfilled in Christ. On his own part, Christ called authentic ministers to be his prophet authentic ministers. He called his authentic ministers. I need to make a, a distinction here. The week, um, the week, yeah, the week preceding the final day of the closure of the novena, we talked about the, um, our connection with God and we said, we asked one question, how can we do business with God, a business that is source of our joy? How can we make our business source of our joy? And then we said, 
if it is true that we are doing business with God, why are we perpetually unhappy? And then we said, one of the things that we must do to make our businesses a source of our happiness and joy is to make sure that we heed to the calling of God. And we said, there are people called by God to do business with him. Not everybody fits in business. And then we attempted to answer the question, why can we be doing business with God and we are perpetually in debt, we are perpetually unhappy, we are perpetually being harassed and tossed right, left, and center? Why? And we gave two reasons. Reason number one, it could be that we had a calling, but we have sabotaged. Not everybody who is unhappy is missing a calling. Sometimes God places in our heart an authentic calling. He gives us the joy to do work with him, but we sabotage that. Reason number two could be people who called themselves. They pushed themselves in business because, arguably, maybe their parents were in business. Forgetting one thing that we'll be able to learn today, that connection with God in terms of the calling is something very personal. When God calls men and women to business, he does not call them as a family. You may have known that even the families that are very, uh, we would call them entrepreneurial families, or the entrepreneurial fa families, even those families that... Um, are so gifted in matters business, there will always be some characters who cannot fit there. That is why you'll see that uh, a family runs a business, but one child or two says that, no, I am, that is not where my calling is. I want my mom and my brother and my dad to be running the business. Me, I want to do something different, completely different. That happens. That's somebody who has realized a calling. Now, there are those who may want to force it to be, to force it in them. No, in our family we do business. It is not right that in a family that they do business, everybody can fit in business. Now, coming back here. Christ calls and called his authentic ministers to be his prophets. Why are we talking about authentic? Because there are people who have forced themselves into the ministry for whatever reason that may have attracted them or motivated them, they are, they are there. They are not authentic. They do not have a calling. They do not have a mandate. Well, it happens. And they are there strewn all over the world. So, we need to pay attention to these authentic prophets that Christ has chosen for us. Hence, as it is written, those who will not listen to these words of the prophets shall be answerable to me for it, the Bible says. Unfortunately, today there are many who claim to be God's prophets. God knew this beforehand, and such false prophets will arise. So, he was very clear about their fate. It is written, those who presume to say in my name what I have not commanded them to say, shall die. Now, that is not good news. But it is a consequence for those who are doing their business, not God's business. The question is, how do we know and distinguish the false prophets from authentic prophets? It is well written, I want to guide you here to read, Matthew chapter 7, 
verses 15 to 20. Can you read in your own time? Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. The distinction between authentic prophets and false prophets. Part 3, that part reads, Beware of false prophets. How shall we know them? You'll know them by their fruits. I want to believe that God has given us uh, enough enlightenment to know the person who, who could be leading us to God and the one who is just gallivanting around. And that is why we need to pray. And we ask God, we need to be vigilant. We need to pray for discernment and paying attention to the teachings of the church. The church will not misguide us, misdirect us. But then, I remember sometimes back I was teaching men, married men, on protection, and we, we, we listed six areas where a married man protects the wife. And among the six areas where a married, we said that um, number one, he protects the wife from himself. That's number one. He protects the wife from herself. That's number two. He protects the wife from her children. That's number three. He protects the wife from her relatives and in other in-laws. That's number four. He protects the wife from the elements. That's number five. And we also said number six, that he protects the wife theologically. Theologically. Please note that. If you are married, note that. If you are married and you do not go to the same church with your wife, you may need to pay attention to that part. Every married man must know where his wife gets her theological and spiritual nourishment. If your wife goes to these churches which are established in the caves, where when they go for, <laughs> for service, they'll first <laughs> make sure that the animals have been chased away. Then they go to the cave, Kamawagaga. <laughs> if that is where your wife, your wife goes to worship, as a husband, please make sure that you have tasted, underline that word, the quality of the theology of that church. Because I said the other day, and I'll keep on saying this till thy kingdom come, that religion is a silent killer of marriages. Unless it is well taken care of, we'll be in church praising the Lord and breaking our marriages. And largely because some of us have been enslaved in the churches. Largely because some of us ladded into the hands of these fake, and false prophets. So, it is always good to pay attention to the theology of the church where you worship. If the church is preaching division, Christ is not there. If the church is preaching hatred, Christ is not there. Think about eh? the countries that have fought, not even in Africa, especially the countries that have experienced tribal crashes. You will always know that uh, Christians are always caught in the fiasco. Always. They are in that mess. And if you didn't know, know today that Christians are the ones who lead in fighting and killings. If you didn't know, please know. 
We have tasted tribal clashes here in Kenya. And we know that Christians killed Christians because they did not share the language. Catholics killed Catholics. Protestants killed Protestants because they did not share a language. When politics is immature, we forget our foundations as human beings. That has happened. So then you can ask, hadn't we heard the voice of the prophets? And you know, you know, in some instances and in some countries, church leaders were the ones who guided the killers where their followers are. And some followers guided the killers where their priests and their pastors were, and they were killed. You know, we may want to pretend that we are so godly, these things do not happen. Lie to yourself. The good thing is that in the online congregation, we do not lie to people. We tell them the truth. We do not preach pleasant theology. If you want pleasant theology with Father C.K., you will never get it. I'll tell you the truth. If you say that I'll never listen to him, do not listen to me. Nenda ukasikisa uogo. Uwabiwe ya tekila mtu ni mzuri, hata kukiwa na vita, uwakizo wanapedana. Mm-hmm. Daganya ni sugura. <laughs> that is where we need to be attentive. The quality of the prophets that we have. The quality of the priests that we have. The quality of the pastors that we have. Today's second reading is very important in this regard. Paul gave a wonderful counsel about celibacy and marriage. However, at the beginning of this counsel, Paul was wise to add, Now concerning the unmarried, I do not have command from the Lord. Kindly read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25. After this, he proceeded to give his wise opinion. Although Paul was a prophet, he knew the consequences of saying, Thus says the Lord. When the Lord did not command him to speak, he knew. He simply gave his opinions, which was a wise thing to do. And that's a lesson that we need to take because so many people have been conned in the church in the name of God. He did not have to be a force by saying that God commanded him to speak. Not everything that we say God commands. Some are our opinions. Others are our misguided propositions. Neither did he need to deceive anyone to make his point. Yet, his point was very clear because he spoke and represented God. In today's gospel, Jesus was passionate to his people. He never deceived them or made false claims. He never. Rather, in contrast to the scribes and the Pharisees, he taught with authority. Authority is a product of connection. Authority is a product of undisputed knowledge. And authority is a product of experience. Authority is a product of passion. Okay. This was not based on worldly credentials or his ability to cite precedents. His only credential was that he is the Son of God. He is 
God. His authority came from the Father. Hence, a true prophet should rely principally on God. Principally on God. That is why it is important for those of you listening to me and you preach. It is an injustice to wake up and go to church to preach before preparing. You prepare your message and give it time to be taught of the Holy Spirit. And then ask yourself, is this what God wants me to say? And we do this because largely we really incline towards present theology or what we call blackmail theology. And our churches have enough of that. And largely because we do not give God a chance to speak to us, largely as preachers. Therefore, it is important that we design every prophecy and evaluate them based on the word of God in the scriptures. Whatever is against the plain sense of the scripture or any prophecy that promotes unhealthy lifestyle and shallow spirituality obviously cannot be from God. It cannot. What we need to have is a relationship with God, period. And a relationship with, with God is not something that you can get through injection. Right now we are talking about a job, COVID job, will be injected. We talk about other many other jobs when we are unwell. When we do not have a connection, we can't be injected. Neither can you be told, take three glasses of water, you have be, you'll be connected. You can't. It is a process that we must personally and consciously take. I am going to share with you a few steps that we can take to create a lasting relationship with God so that when it comes time for us to speak, we also speak with authority as Jesus did because through our baptism, we became altus Christus, another Christ. Step number one, and embrace the truth. Embrace the truth that intimacy with God has no contenders. If you read Exodus 34, number 14, eh? God likes it this way because he doesn't want any contenders for your heart. He is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. He only wants him and him alone. That is a fact. It is a truth that we need to communicate and uh, commit to our heart and our brains, number two. Step number two, accept that a fulfilling, intimate love relationship with God is personal. Personal. Now, this is important. God does not call congregations. Neither does he save congregations. He does not save nations. He is a specific God who deals with specific people with specific problems. We can be in a church and we are a thousand of us. We can't say that we are here because God has called all of us. No. Because there are so many reasons where people go to church. Even those who are in various churches, whatever it is that they are, there are people who go to church because it is near the stage. And the vehicle is coming at 10. And there is mass at 8. So they are there. There is another one who is going to church because he is a young man and he has not been able to get a wife. And there is a beautiful girl in the choir. And this guy shows up. He has not been called by God. 
He has been called by loneliness in his bed. <laughs> and he has seen somebody. <laughs> and therefore, he is there. The other one could be going there because he or she want to give the priest or the pastor some papers. The other one could be there because they are doing business. And that day there will be some um, a display of their products. Others are there because it's a social event. After all, where else do we go? And uh, very few. <laughs> I, I don't want to lie to myself. We have very few who are there because they have something with God that they want to accomplish. So if you see yourself in church, in the cathedrals and big churches and oratories and chapels, full, don't think that all of you are headed the same place. No. The day we learn to understand that our connection is personal, it is the day we get serious. Even if my mom is a believer, she cannot win salvation for me. Even if my dad is a believer, he cannot win salvation for me. I must work on it myself. Father CK cannot win salvation for the followers. I cannot. Mungangane, nami ningangane. Tutapatana kule ivo. And it is also possible that Father CK may miss that step. And you'll get it. So, allow me to talk to those who have been enslaved by false and fake prophets. Please know, your prophet cannot win salvation for you. That is your job. Step number three, talk with God. Talk with God. And here, there are two things that you need. Reading the Bible and through prayer life. Two things. Reading the Bible and your prayer life. Enhancing your prayer life. It is not possible to talk about connection. Uh, and again, we are still swimming in the sea or the lake of the biblical illiteracy. It doesn't go that way. Step number four. Spend time with others who believe in Christ. People who are inclined like you. If you are a believer, spend time with the believers. Them who have befriended Christ, be there. Because you have everything in common and you can help each other to grow. Step number five, be patient. Growing in intimacy with God, again, it does not have happen overnight. It is a gradual process. Of course, the culmination is the beatific vision. Be patient. You may not be there today. Please be patient. Pray. Trust. And hope. Be connected. Step number six. Rely on the Holy Spirit who now indwells in you. And every time we talk about the Spirit, always make a distinction. Is it the Spirit of God or is it something that I'm fashioning myself? Which Spirit is leading me? Because we need to rely on the Spirit. The Spirit that teaches us reminds us and sustains us and finally stop step number seven. Embrace the truth that God loves us and wants us to find true fulfillment in him. Now this is important. I like this because we have found fulfillment in other things, in other places, in other persons. I said the other time, the tragic reality in our 21st century Christianity is that we have got Christians, we've got Christians who are more loyal to their institution than they are to God. Christians who are more loyal to their pastors and priests and bishops and apostles and mention them 
more than they are to God. To the extent that some of us have been literally enslaved, been enslaved. Some have even lost their marriages. Others have even lost themselves. They are slaves, as it were, slaves in the church. God wants us to have fulfillment in him. According to the Bible, God can fulfill us with his, number one, his love. He really cares about us. He really wants the other person. Number two, with his security. He really cares about what happens to you every time he cares. Number three, his significance. I love that. He really cares about your extreme value. Your extreme value. And your extreme value is not attached on what you have accomplished. It is not attached on the prominence of your culture or tribe. Not even the papers that you have amassed. Not even the experience of life. And not even the size of the family that has raised you. No, please. On one fact, that we are sons and daughters of him, number four, his peace. He really cares about your problems. The rest of us may not care. He does. Number five, his purpose. He really cares about your finding fulfillment because purpose gives us fulfillment. And finally, his future, eternity with him. He really cares about your eternal destiny. We read from John chapter 6, I think verse number 54, that there is nobody who will go to him who will ever be taken out or chased. None. All of us belong to him. He cares about our eternal destiny because we are destined for him, with him, in eternity. Please, let us find our fulfilled God himself and alone and only. There are those who tried in money. It didn't work. There are those who have tried in education. It has not worked. There are those who have tried social positions. It is not working. It will never work. Please, let us go back to God. That is where we belong. Thank you and God bless you. We profess our faith.
thank you, dear Father, for the gift of this day. We thank you for the gift of one another. You have called us today to pay attention to the words of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Help us to always remain connected. Lord, hear us. We pray for our pastors, our priests, our bishops, our prophets and prophetesses. We pray for the authenticity of whatever it is that they teach, dear Father, that you may give them your wisdom. You may fill them with the Holy Spirit, that whenever they talk, it will not be them, but you in them. Your petitions are most welcome. Our Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we come before you thanking you for the gift of life. We present before your mighty throne the Mother Church, which you started through Jesus Christ, your Son, and the Apostles. We humbly ask for guidance from you, for our church leaders. We pray for the Pope and the laity that guided by the Holy Spirit, we shall all follow your teachings and guide everyone, including non-believers, to heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. A prayer for the country. Lord, our loving and omnipotent Lord, in this very day, we present to you all the country leaders, starting from the president, and his cabinet, that you, Lord, may you instill in them all the graces they need to lead your people and exercise justice and unity among them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for families. Lord Almighty, we thank you for the gift of families all over the world. Lord, we pray that you may grant them the gift of faith, unite them in your love, bless the work of their hands so that they can be able to serve you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We now ask the intercession of our Mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice in the U.S. may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise for our good and the good of God. Amen. And let us pray. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks. Truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in an approachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might feel you are creatures with the blessings, and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels, who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have done. He had lost your friendship. You did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, 
so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your, your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left as covenant, for when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, You and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the cherries filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the cherries to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cherries of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Lord. As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood 
the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all who for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, our bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, fusion of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. continue to pray for deeper relationship with Christ and the commitment into following the teaching of the church and listening to the authentic prophet that God has called for us. Let us do that using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer with one another and to one another the sign of Christ's peace. Social distancing, eh? Peace of Christ.
Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we invited to his holy. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus in the Eucharist. Behold, my most loving Jesus, to what an excess your boundless love has carried you. Of your own fresh and precious blood, you have made lady for me a divine boycott so as to give myself completely. What was it that impelled you to this transport of love? Nothing else, surely, save your most loving heart. O oh, adorable heart of my Jesus, O oh, burning furnace of divine love, within your most sacred would receive my soul, that in that school of charity I may learn to liquid the love of God that God, who has given me such wordless proof of his love, amen. Soul of Christ, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of the Christ, unburied my veins, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me, 
O oh good Jesus, hear me. Within your woods, hide me. Let me not be separated from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come unto you. That with your saints I may praise you for all eternity. Amen. We now rise for the thanksgiving song. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call on you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, True faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. 
before the final blessings, allow me to say thank you to all of you out there from whichever country that you are following us from. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, our ever glorious choir. Thank you so much for that beautiful singing. Those who read Asantani Sana, our other server, Mwarimu, Asante Sana, God bless you, Mr. Tiano. <laughs> Asante Sana, our sign language interpreter, thank you so much, God bless you, and our crew, and many, many others who have made this day a possibility. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our Mass is ended. Yes, God. Do have a blessed Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah